Welcome back. In case you are just joining us, you are watching Metropole Television. My name is Elijah Charles Kiyagi. We are online at Metropole TVKE across all your social media platforms. I am at Kiyagi Simba. You can get the conversation going on this morning. Hashtag is a business I am. This morning, before I introduce the guest that we have for you in the studio, let's first get into that introduction. Now, Airbnb is an online platform that connects individuals who want to rent out their homes to people who are looking for accommodations in that locale. Formerly referred to as Air Bed and Breakfast, it was created in 2008 as a cheaper means of accommodation to the average customer of the hotel industry. Currently, it covers more than 100,000 cities and at 220 countries worldwide and has justifiably become one of the most successful online businesses in the world today. Today, on the status of this market and its future, we feature to bio an Airbnb travel application for Africa. And joining us is Brian Namanya, who is the founder and a chief executive officer to bio. Brian, how are you doing, sir? Great, great. Welcome to Metropole Television. Thank you so much for having me. L let me let me begin from a basic point that Airbnb has become a disruptor, mm -hmm. not just in real estate, mm -hmm. but at tourism as well. Mm -hmm. In what way has Airbnb become a disruptor since 2008? Uh, I'll tell you this. Um, back then in tourism, generally, if you needed to have a tourism business, you needed capital, you needed to have trucks, or you need enough money to set up lodges. Yes. But today, you need your extra house, you know, a furnished house to start an accommodation business. And to uh, do an experience, you need just a passion with just a phone, you set up a profile, and you started a travel business. And that's it. And that's it. And that's the disruption that that's the disruption. these two particular sectors weren't ready for. Yeah, so if we had like only 100 players uh, 10 years ago, today we can have um, 1,000 million players in just one week. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, 2008 was the introduction of Airbnb. I mean, mm -hmm. since 2008 up to where we are right now, mm -hmm. I mean, what advancements have you seen in this particular business mm -hmm. that won there maybe 10 years, 12 years ago? Well, yeah, there's been a trend where locals have traveled more, yes. are traveling more. Um, uh, particularly in Uganda, before that, travel was just a luxury. And the only time we traveled as locals was during um, school, primary, when they told you you have a trip, you have a enjoy trip, at so your you best behavior, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, because that day you showed up to school early, not to miss the trip. So that excitement is still there, but locals weren't able to afford this just because of the cost of production that involved, you know, the cost of operations that involved a travel business. Yes. So it was mainly for foreigners, but the trend today is the locals are now participating in travel. Pretty much. And locals, I mean Africans, yeah. Right. Now let's talk about Tobio then. Uh -huh. When did you start it? Why did you start it? And um, what advancements have you gone through since you started? So Tobio started uh, in 2018. That was when we got the idea. And uh, I didn't know about Airbnb. Mine was a trip to Nairobi with my mom. We had come for the East African Convention. And then we're staying at the hotel. So she would go for the meetings and I would start the hotel. And I would wonder, what should I do, you know? And of course, you'd Google like things to do around the city and they're just safaris. But I, I didn't take it seriously, so I would wait on her and then go back to Uganda like after two days. So sometime I'm seated, I'm, 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 I'm there on my own in Uganda and I'm tired of what I was doing. That yes. was branding. Yes. And then uh, I just think on, uh, 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 what can I do? What business can I do? Then I make quick research on the internet to find the richest people in the world. And they were doing internet business and technology. So that's how I get excited about, because there was this saying, you do what the five people are doing, you're going to be the sixth yes. person. Yes. So that's when I decide on uh, um, uh, uh, internet. And then uh, I use my economics background to find which sector can an African start with, you know, with the limited resources, definitely a service sector. And so travel, uh, I decided on, tra on internet, then travel. And then as I was you know, trying to fulfill the product, of course, you start making research on the internet. And then I discovered this platform, Airbnb. And you know, they had done this product already because they launched in uh, 2008. So when I discovered it, it even made more sense. I'm like, this is what Africa needs. Mm -hmm. We have no accommodation. Yes. But there's this whole macro policy to increase tourism activity in the country. And so how are we going to accelerate accommodation in, 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 in Africa? So by encouraging and enabling people like you who have extra apartments, yes. put them up on a platform like ours, 
and then you know avail space for tourists. So I noticed this is a perfect solution. No accommodation, we can cover that when people put up their spaces. Yes. The second was on activities. How are we going to create as many activities so that people find a variety of products to do in Africa? And that's the selling point, isn't it? The yes. activities the there. Activities. Not just about putting up accommodation. No. Yes. Even things to do. There's got to be a plus. Yes to the accommodation. Yes. yes. And so this is the best way to do it. Yes. We notice individuals are all unique, you know, and so if you give them a platform to put up their unique passion, their talent, there's a t there is something for everyone on the internet. So when the tourists come, they'll notice, oh, I should learn how to cook Ugali when I'm in Nairobi. I see now. And they'll pay you for that. I see now. So now you've created an Ugali experience. Yes. Then one is passionate about like the city and the buildings. They are going to put up a, an activity on, you know, let's go around the city and I show you the most magnificent buildings in Nairobi. And so uh, we noticed the best way to do that is use a platform. And so I was so inspired and encouraged to like uh, get started on it. Pretty and the opportunity much. was Airbnb had done it, great, but their main focus is America, you know, Europe. They, they're not focusing so much on Africa. So I knew we needed someone who's going to be as passionate about Africa to create that solution to you know, fix our uh, travel industry here. Pretty much, so whatever you did is just import the experience yes. into Africa, and, isn't it? And just be realistic with the African conditions. Yes, I like the way you keep on saying we, I'd like to know who we is. We keep on saying Tuba because we're talking about when you started it. So yes. how did, what first step did you make? All right, so the first thing was to talk to my cousin uh, who is a developer. Yes. About, hey, I have this idea about tech and if we do it right, we're going to be billionaires just like all these tech billionaires we see. And, you know, I don't, I think he bought into it because he created time for me. <laughs> so we put up our yes. first website. Yes. Um, it was just a nice uh, HTML with just images not working, but I was excited about it. Yes. And then uh, slowly I started to tell the service providers to join on the platform of just display your products here. Yes. But it was so hard, you know, um, they would ask, what's your experience? Uh, well, have you, your website's not as beautiful as mine, you know, things like that that were very uh, demotivating. And then I noticed I could put up these tours myself, you know, so I discovered a very beautiful place in Jinja and I put up a weekly tour there. So that was when I first started selling. But I remember the first week I put it up, uh, I didn't get any booking. And so I, I felt really bad. I wanted to put it down, but I was low on cash, you know, so I decided to try it again. And the next week I get two people, but I needed 10 people to be economical. Yes. So even that week I called and lied to those customers that the trip was fully booked. <laughs> we can't, you know, uh, you guys have to refund you. Yes. They're like, oh, I think it has high market. Yes. Let's wait on the next Let's one. Let's wait on the next and one. And I didn't want to do the third trip. <laughs> but I, yes. you know, I decided let me give it now my all. So yes. I pushed the flyers uh, on social media, Facebook groups, everywhere. And that trip got full. I remember the satisfaction of writing fully booked on that trip mm. was, was great. Mm. So now mm. what that taught me and Tim was how to market for these service providers that we are encouraging to get onto our platform. Yes. They get onto our platform to get the market, to make money. So they're not putting it just for fun. So now that was a very interesting lesson for us to learn the dynamics, what, what is involved. People are depending on these activities to earn a living for their families. Yes. So that's how we started learning how to service the customers, how to market. And fast forward, we, we start serving over 300, 300 people per week, yes. which was a big number, but we're doing it manually. And this really emphasized the need of technology to make it so smooth. And uh, by 2020, during COVID, we had done a lot of like noise around. We got invited uh, to participate in an accelerator with MasterCard. And that's where we got all the help with like business development. We got also some funding and then we used that to create our app that we launched uh, around August of uh, 2020. Yes. Yeah. So from the app, uh, fast forward, we've been like getting so many users, finding it so convenient to book homes and experiences to where we are now taking on um, the Kenyan market because this is like the best to, you know, move into Africa I as, don't know. as a whole. All right. So let me talk about the Ugandan experience. Uh -huh. Would you say that in, in a way that is relatable, I, because I know you've used Airbnb, you've yes. seen exactly how you interact with yes. it and you've seen exactly how people interact with it. Would you say that that adoption uh, level mm -hmm. could be compared to what we've seen in the Western markets where Airbnb is reaching that? Oh yeah, if you ask me to, you know, to, to tell you what the future will be like, I'll tell you the users are going to demand more convenience. Yes. So they want to book it easily. Yes. They are going to demand a variety of, of trips, you know, yes. and find them easily. They don't want to keep calling of, hey, send me the options you have. No, they want to get onto a mobile 
app or platform, right. find a variety, mm. book it conveniently. Yes. That's going to be true even for us. Yes. You know, so yeah, that's an opportunity that we need to really um, 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 Pretty much. hold on to. Now you decided then to come to Kenya. Can you uh -huh. give me your plans for Kenya then? And when you compare these two markets, uh -huh. what do you think is the advantage for coming into Kenya? So Kenya, oh God. Me as a, when I got here, I could feel that vibrance. I could feel that fast pace, you know, in Nairobi. Yes. And, and, and we knew as a, a team, this is where we need to be. These are the people we need to partner with. And also, on the realistic part, Kenya is Uganda's biggest uh, tourism market. Yes. And vice versa. Uganda is also Kenya's biggest tourism That's market. True. So it's, we, we would get so many Ugandans asking, but we're going to Nairobi. We're going to Mombasa. Do we have activities there? We need this kind of convenience there. You know, and so now first is to solve that challenge that you know the Ugandans that want to keep that keep coming this side they want to now book easily, pay a great price, yes, in, you know, conveniently. And so we also think it's the same thing for the Kenyans going to Uganda as well, yes, yeah, pretty much. Now, when you look at that particular space, mm -hmm. I mean, for you, what you've done is that you've said, Well, why can't we have Airbnb for Africa? Give them yeah. the same experience, yeah. Is that it, or oh, this is still a growing market? Well, yeah, it's a it's a growing market, really. Um, uh, and that's the thing about platforms. Yes, you know, all you want to do is develop that platform and just be keen uh, to see the user interactions. The users will amaze you with how much they would use that. You know, yes. Uh, just uh, to, to give you a comparison, it's just how they develop like Android. You know, you never, you didn't know which kind of apps would get that's on true. there. So if we give people the opportunity to use this platform, we don't know what amazing experiences, what amazing accommodation, innovations, what they will do. So yes. we're just really keen on that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that we're talking about a company that you started in 2018, then two years later, you got into the COVID-19 pandemic season mm -hmm. that has been with you in 2020 and 2021. Could yeah. you talk to me about that shift? Oh yeah, so first, uh, that of course, it affected the travel business, yes. so, you know, world over, um, uh, but to us, uh, we are very optimistic people. It was a great opportunity for us to really focus on our technology. You know, earlier in 2019, when we were moving really fast and aggressively, we we're doing things manually. So you find you have like 100 calls today. It was too much work. There was no time to focus on the real long-term vision of the company. Yes. So COVID-19 came. We had money. We were not stressing about uh, what are we going to find, you know, because we had gotten into the accelerator program. So we used that chance to... Um, um, develop our technology, knowing that once uh, uh, lockdown is lifted, people are going to have a nice product to use, and that's what has been happening. Yes. Yeah. All right, now give me then to bio, and I'm not talking about just Kenya, because now you're in two markets officially, yes, yes. that's Uganda and Kenya. What is your vision in the next, like, five years, if I may, if I may ask? So it's really making travel easy for everyone. In Africa, and would you say? Yes, in Africa. Yes. And why, why, why I think travel is interesting, uh, I'll give you this scenario. Um, when we look back at history, like how the explorers came into Africa, you know, they wanted to explore what's out there. So when they came into Africa, they discovered great opportunity. The people, the resources, and what they did, they communicated back to their countries or the kingdoms where they were coming from. Yes. Of, hey, there's great resources here that could, you know, empower people back home. And so I think if we spark that with the Africans, we get them to move from their communities, to check out what's out there in the other countries. If the Kenyans moved from here, checked out what's in Uganda, in Rwanda, in Tanzania, they will see so much opportunity. And when you do that, you, you know, you create a... Uh, 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 people get productive, you know. Yes. So our vision is really to spark that new economic uh, growth to catch up with the world. Yes. By simply enabling people to travel and seeing what's out there. Pretty much. I mean, the conversation again in 2021 is that now people are much more price sensitive as well. And I think that's key, especially when you start a platform like that. Because then if you're going to attract in a lot of um, customers, then price sensitivity has to be part of that. Yeah. I know it's a portal. But people come in and, and then give their services. Mm -hmm. But how do you make sure? Do you, do you look at the prices and say, probably at your level, you're, you're not for to buy? Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, and really how that works, it's the, the real market forces are in play here. Yes. Supply and demand. So yes. this is one marketplace where thousands of people are bringing their services. Yes. And so, so that will somehow create that competitive environment for them you know, to want to win that customer will get on. So they're going to price well. I see. But most importantly, it's helping them be efficient in their operations. Mm -hmm. When I do such a business, all I need is my mobile phone. Before I needed 
trucks, I needed an office space, I needed a marketing team, I needed you know, an accountant. And so if I was to price for a trip, I need to put all of that into consideration. With the app, we've built, we have these inbuilt tools that are helping you do all of that. So one, you're very efficient. That means it's going to achieve the price goal that we're aiming at. Yes. And the customer is going to win. Pretty much. So what you're saying is that when you come to, to buy or then, is that there's a portal of an array of services you can actually get to choose from. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And the interaction with the app, does it allow you to filter really and know exactly what it is that you want? Oh, yeah. You, you, you look for the destination. You yes. filter through um, uh, the categories. Maybe you're an adrenaline junkie. You yes. filter through that. Yes. Maybe you need accommodation in this particular location probably two bedrooms, you filter through all of that to yes. get that perfect uh, uh, place for you. Fantastic. Then it opens another conversation, uh, uh -huh. Brian, security. About, this is one that I got, that sometimes, especially when it comes to Airbnbs and these online platforms that actually give you a pool of service that you're supposed to pick from, that you as to buy might not have the ability to scrutinize the services and say, you can actually get to go here because it's a good place. How do you ensure that even a new client who's coming in that knows exactly what is going on in this particular client, service A, service B, service C, security perspective? Because at the end of the day, Brian, somebody's going to say, well, at Tobio, man, you, you go pick their service clients. They have, for lack of a better word, one point service as opposed to the five that they're promising. And I think that concern is best uh put out with technology and, and, and like web platforms. Yes. You know, one, they give people the ability to rate the service. Yes. You know. So if it's a bad service, they're going to leave a review, you know, so the next customer, you know, knows, has an informed, uh, uh, makes an informed decision. I see. And then two, I think internet is like the best way to trace people. Yes. You know, um, uh, once, when you get on right from Google, there is, you can be traced, you know, the accounts you use, um, uh, so now we're putting features like you need to show your national ID. These are much better features than even what's happening uh, on, on ground when yes. someone just randomly looks for a guest house. Yes. You know, so I think it's even much safer on the internet. Of course, you're faced with a lot of fraud, but um, uh, we have those partners who have really uh, created great security systems. I think it's a lot better on the internet. Yes. You know? yeah. yes. And when you vet uh, somebody who's um, bringing mm -hmm. their services to Dubai, mm -hmm. do, do you vet them first before then you can say, well, you have a green light to actually bring oh, your yeah. service to Dubai? Oh, yeah. So, yes. yeah, you go through a verification uh, checklist on, on, on the person that yes. gets there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, let's talk then to that person who wants to be mm -hmm. your client. I'm talking mm -hmm. about those guys who want to offer their services. The how hosts. do yeah the hosts? How do they get to be a uh, part of Dubai? Oh yeah, so it's easy. Um, you simply download our app yes. and uh, you create a user profile. And now from that, you're given the opportunity if you have an offering, either accommodation or service, go to your account profile, become a host. Yes. Super easy. You, it, the form is really direct. You it will guide you on what to fill in, the information that we want. Yes. And then from that, you submit it to our end and the team goes to, over it uh, to verify your account, then to enable you start um, listing. And that's it. Yeah. Now, for this guy then who wants to experience to buy, or how do they get to do that as well? Um, so that one, just simply also download the app and uh, use this app. Use it like social media. Keep going through. See the wonderful accommodation that's out there. Yes. Um, see the wonderful experience experiences that you need to try you and your squad it's on there you can make easy payments with mpesa mobile money even card it, it's right there for you already add to your wish list you know um, things you can manifest you know and then yeah go, be ready to go for the experiences pretty much now just as we come to the end of this conversation the app uh -huh. is available on both play store, play store and, 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 app store. and app store isn't it yes. fantastic for anybody who's listening then 2022 i mean 2021 was said it's a year of recovery for smaller businesses. While well, it was hot and cold, some businesses went down. They're That's trying to true. come up in 2021, 2022. For you, from what you're saying this morning, Brian, what do you feel 2022 has to offer for a smaller business like yours, really, with a lot of ambition and vision for Africa, especially uh, in this space, yeah. tourism and hospitality? I think 2022 is, is a year of um, expansion, really. Yes. Um, uh, to us, I think uh, uh, we're doing something right. We, 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 we're engaging both businesses and you know, empowering as many individuals to get on here. Yeah. So, and we've seen the trend. We've seen so many people increasingly getting excited about travel because they can afford it, they can find it easily. 
and, and you know, so we're excited about new markets. So far, we're enabling over 10 uh, uh, countries yes. uh, to use our platform, but we have presence in two countries so far, which is Kenya and Uganda. Yes. Um, so yeah, we're excited about uh, uh, the future of travel. And I also think travel hit its rock bottom, and now the only way is, is up. Is, is so we, up, isn't it? we're excited. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, uh, any, th any worry that you may have about the COVID-19 pandemic affecting your business again in a 2022, or you guys in the sector already trying ways to live with this COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's something really uh, we have to live with uh, and also just innovate around, you mm -hmm. know. Um, uh, we have to recognize the reality, you know, um, so it, it's affecting so much our, the, the economy and all. Um, but yeah, so we have to live with it. But we've seen a trend, even people are now choosing to work from our places, yes. uh, you know, because they are staying home, you know. Um, uh, yeah, and also to do the small, small, simple travels when they're bored. We, we've really seen a trend of, of this kind of thing picking up. So, uh, no, we're excited, really. <laughs> excited for you as well, Brian. Now you do know just to bio. That's it. Go on your app store and play store to bio. Want to work with them, have any service, have a restaurant, have a home that you want to register as well. Brian is calling it the Airbnb of Africa. Why not try it as well? Because he's saying it's not just about the homes, it's not about the restaurants, it's just about the entire experience. Brian, thank you very much for coming to Metropole TV. I'm so, I'm so excited. Anytime. Yeah. All right, now we take a short break, but once we come back, let's talk about why oil marketers in the country have been denied that chance by EPRA, by EPRA sorry, to have month by monthly review prices of in the country once we come back.